Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, our quest letter came to us from Louisville, Kentucky. Charles wrote, Dear Joel, how do they make tortilla chips? Are they made out of little tortillas? Well, Charles, because of you, we are out here at Anita's Mexican Foods Corp in the city of San Bernardino in Southern California, where we're gonna learn how they make tortilla chips. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest. Let's go. We're inside Anita's rather small facility. Ha ha ha. And I'm here with Lucy. Hi. And Lucy, so tell us what do you do here? Well, I'm the purchasing manager for Anita's Mexican Foods. Okay, when you say purchasing manager, you buy stuff. Yes, <laughs> I am in charge of making sure that we have all the materials that we're going to need in order to manufacture our tortilla chips and taco shells. So tell me a little bit about Anita's. How long have you been in business? Well, Anita's was founded back in 1934, the original family called the Marcus family, had it until 1978. The present owners, the Robles family, they bought it in 1978 and have sustained it up until now. It's a family-owned business and always has been. And you've been here for how long? Oh, I've been here for about 30 years. Started back in 1986. Tell me a little bit about this timeline behind it. This is pretty fascinating. Well, yes. What we try to depict here is a little bit about the history of our company. Here just depicts the fact that this is the founding family, Mr. Mauro and his wife, his five children, and um, now their kids are also involved in the business. That is so awesome. So give me some, some numbers, like how many tortilla chips do you guys make in a in a day or in a week well, or in a... we uh, manufacture like any given week, but this one, for example, was scheduled to run about 650,000 pounds of tortilla chips. We're probably around 33, 34 million pounds of chips on a yearly basis. And you've been doing this since the 30s. Yes, in the 30s when they started, when the original family started, they were doing tortillas. Okay. You know, just the regular table tortillas, but then not everything would sell. So they would take those day old tortillas, cut them, and make chips. That's what, so Charles' letter that brought us out here asked if they make tortilla chips out of little tortillas. They make, yeah, that's in originally how you would make tortillas. <laughs> that's great. I thought I was going to read that going, hmm. Yeah, that was, that was the, the rustic. That's the handmade. That's something that you can also do at home. You take your tortillas, cut them, and fry them. So what is the first step when making tortilla chips? But before you answer, how about you guys answer? What is the first step in making a tortilla chip? Putting a tortilla into a chip. Getting your dough ready. First, you have to make a tortilla dough. Get it from a tortilla, you cut it out from a tortilla, you just heat it up in the oven and then you get to eat it. Pick the ingredients. Mix it. Put in the tortilla in the oven to bake it. You need to put all the ingredients together and then put them in the oven. Um, cutting up a tortilla. Lucy, what's the first step? Okay, well the first step is cooking our corn. Here we have what we call super sacks and they contain about 2,000 to 2,100 pounds of corn. Wow! Right, so we, yeah, it is a lot of corn. And it's hard corn, it's yes, not cooked? Yes, it's, it's whole corn. Okay. It's whole corn. It's corn that has been harvested out in the field, it's been cleaned, bagged, and then it comes to us in 45,000 pounds at a time. So we process white, yellow, and blue corn on a daily basis. So the first thing that he is doing is he's hoisting this up and he's gonna position it over a hopper. He's gonna open the sack and that hopper has a conveying system that's going to push the corn up into our cooking vessel. Wow. Does it always start off uh, all tortilla chips or they start off as whole corn? Well, it depends on your facility and what we're able to do. Now we have customers that love the taste of cooked corn. 
so we do that for them. And we have another market segment that prefers to use masa flour, and we'll explain that when we get to the okay. other side. How many tortilla chips will a bag like this make? Well, um, it, it contains about 2,000 pounds, but you have to take out some moisture for that. So you probably get about 70, 75% yield out of a 2,000 pound sack. And then he'll start the machine and the machine will go ahead and pull up the corn into the cooking vessel. It ends up going into that vessel right there that is a steam jacketed kettle. Okay. And so water and steam are applied, water is applied, it's heated up. So between the water and the steam, we are able to cook our corn to be able to process it. And one of the things that we need to do is we need to add to it food grade calcium hydroxide. And you're asking, well, what is that? What is calcium hydroxide? Something that you put in soda. Um, stuff that they get from cows. A certain kind of vitamin. Um, something that it can hurt you. A liquid. It's something that you put on a cut so that it doesn't get infected. Can I make you sick? Yeah. Well, that is needed in order to cook the corn and bring out the nutrients because okay. corn is quite hard. So that aids in the process. Now, in the next step, we will clean that corn. We will rinse that corn. We will remove the outer skin or the pericarp, and then we'll be able to ground it. So at that process of rinsing out the corn, we rinse out that processing agent that we used in order to help us cook the corn and bring out the nutrients. How long will it cook for right here? Probably about 45 minutes max. Oh, is that's what it? It's what it's gonna take. And then from there, however, it has to rest or steep, and that may take another four to six hours. So about uh, a few minutes to cook, many hours to rest, to rest or steep. Exactly. So when the corn goes up there to get cooked, we can't actually see inside of it. You can't because it's actually like a big giant pressure cooker. So we call it a steam jacket and kettle, but that's what it does. It will cook the corn under pressure. And once the corn has been cooked, then we will transfer it into the silos or the tanks behind us. And that does the steeping process. And that, like I said, will take anywhere between four to six hours. Now, what we do is two things. Finish cooking the corn in there, and then at one point, we will start adding cold water to stop the cooking process and bring it down now to room temperature so we can start actually processing, which means grinding the corn. And it's going through these hoses and go up. Exactly, once it's finished cooking and the pressure is relieved, then they go ahead and open the valve and put it into the designated tank, which they'll label and they know what time they started cooking it, what time it went into the steeping tank, and what color corn it's going to be. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. In Mexico, tortilla chips are called tostados, which means toasted chips. So those bats back there were holding it for four to six hours. Yes cooling it down, yes. and now it's now, going to the washing process. Now we have to wash it. So because we added calcium hydroxide to help it cook, so now we're going to wash that out, and we're also going to peel the outer skin or the pericarp of the corn. So that's what we're doing here in the corn washer. And then now it's going to go up this conveyor and into our grinder. And in our grinder, we have a couple of stones, a couple of milling stones that have some grooves and they're rotating in opposite direction, and they are actually grinding down the corn now to a masa or a dough. It, it seems like after it's cooled down, this is a very quick process. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. From the moment, once the corn is ready to go through the corn washer, and when we finish it, probably you have no more than 20, 25 minutes at the most, and then you have a finished bag of tortilla chips. And we can control how thin or thick or how coarse or fine by how much we tighten those stones together. Figure this, you have some customers that might have a salsa out Ooh. there in the market. So they want chips to complement it. So they want that chip to be able to sturdy enough to pick up their chunky salsa. So you want a nice sturdy chip. Do you know right now, is this being ground down to a yes. thin or a thick? It is being ground down to a medium size. Medium. Medium, medium coarseness. 
And from there, then it'll go into our oven to be ready to turn into a tortilla before it gets turned into a tortilla chip. That's just, that's so funny, because I, I go back to Charles. I thought it was like a joke he was asking that, but it's true. Yes. It starts as a tortilla yes. to make a chip. Yes. So we moved from that room right here to this room, and the temperature went up at least, what, 10 degrees, 15 probably, degrees? Probably so, because here we have ovens and fryers. So now we took it from our, our mixing or cook room into our baking and frying room. Ooh, so hot. we take our masa, which we either had from cooked corn that we cooked ourselves or that we mixed in the mixer, and then we'll convey it using these conveyors overhead and then they'll come into our first machine, which is a pre-sheeter. A pre-sheeter. Pre-sheeter. Okay. And so what we're actually doing, and this picture that's at home, if you're making cookies, you take your rolling pin and you roll out your dough. Uh. Okay, that's exactly the same thing we're doing. We're rolling it out to the correct thinness that we need in order to be able to take that cookie cutter and cut out all the shape that we want. So it's literally coming from that room through the wall, yes. right here, going right into here, and now it's rolling it yes. right here. It's rolling it out. So can we see on this side? Oh, wow. It's rolling and cutting at yes. the same time? Yes. You have a cutter on the bottom behind those two rollers that is cutting out the shape. Now, today we're doing a triangle on this piece of equipment. So you have your masa traveling, going through the pre-sheeter, and then it's heating it out, and then the second rollers give it the thickness or thinness that we need. And right behind that, you have that cutting guy that's running the length of the belt, and it's cutting out the shape. Now, I, there's a gentleman up there that was taking, I don't know if we'll see that, because he was taking some off. Right, because what he does constantly is he picks up from the middle, from the side, 10 chips, and he weighs them. Oh! So that he makes sure that they are the right weight. So when we get into the bag, if you have a chip that's too heavy, then your bag's gonna look empty. If you have a chip that's too light, then you won't be able to put it into the bag. Now, we do fill the bags depending on what the weight is on the packaging. So if you're doing one pound, we will put one pound of chip, but we wanna make sure that they're all consistent and they all weigh the same. Yeah, this is now the oven, and the oven has three conveyor belts. So it has a three-pass oven. Oh, wow. OK. So, yeah, it's going so it goes one way, the other way, and then it comes back up. And it ends up on the bottom tier, and then the chips are picked up. So now at this point, this is the tortilla part of the tortilla chip. <laughs> cool. Okay? The difference between a tortilla chip and a corn chip, we have to make it different. Oh, 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 oh wait, before you tell us, what is the difference between a tortilla chip and a corn chip? What is the difference between a tortilla chip and a corn chip? Um, a corn chip is made out of corn tortillas, and a tortilla chip is made out of flour. They taste different. They are the same, but one doesn't have any flavor, and one does. A tortilla chip's crunchier. OK, the difference is that tortilla chip is first baked and then fried. A corn chip is deposited directly over the fryer and fried directly. Oh, that's kind of know that. Yeah, so oh. now you have, now the advantage of a tortilla chip is that you have less fat. Oh, okay. okay because you're only going to have probably about seven, six or seven grams of fat for a tortilla chip for a one ounce serving. But when you go to a corn chip, you're probably more in the neighborhood of nine to 10 grams of fat. And this is our cooling conveyor. Oh or equilibrator, and what it's doing, it's also helping us remove some of the moisture. Okay, wow, because that's what, cool. Yeah, it, that's what it does. Not only are we baking the chip, but we're also air drying it. Because back in the old days, you had day-old tortillas, and that is what you would turn into tortilla chips. But here, since we have the process automated, and we're doing this a little bit faster than, you know, one day from, from one day to another, we need this cooling conveyor to help us mimic the air dry. Is it cooler now that you take one? No. Right on the end. Oh, it's still kind of. Yeah, it's still kind of warm. You all, you basically have a tortilla. It's tortilla. Yeah. Okay. This yeah. This is just a tortilla cut in the shape of a triangle. So how long before the tortilla chip gets hard? 
Well, probably um, it would be a good hour or so before it started to dry out. Oh, okay. You know, you say that because I do, it feels a little moist. Yeah, there's still moisture in it. But we take care of that moisture in the frying process. In the frying process. All right, so we're still moving down. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Most tortilla chips are triangular shaped because they're cut from round tortillas. When it comes into this room, like you said, it's like a big rolling pin. Exactly. And then that rolling pin creates a huge tortilla. Yes. And then that tortilla makes different sizes. Right. What ends up happening is that that rolling pin, and you've got one back there. Yeah. That big roller right there will roll it out in a sheet, and then you have the cutter positioned right below it that's going to cut that sheet into the small shape. They have triangles, squares, Trails, strips, big triangles. Big triangles, smaller triangles, um, rounds, mini rounds. As a matter of fact, the, the machine behind us is doing mini rounds. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Check that out. So the size that I see it right now will be the size that it ends up? Yes, it is going to shrink about plus or minus an eighth of an inch. OK. So it will shrink down because, remember, moisture is being removed out yeah. of it. So it's going to shrink down a little bit. Wow. All right. And it's so fast. I mean, how many chips are coming out per minute? Well, um, we manufacture about, on this line, probably we run close to 2,000 pounds an hour. 2,000 pounds an hour. That's a lot. Yes. And by the way, if you can't tell, it's hot in here. There's a thermometer on the wall, and that thermometer is just a hair off of 100 degrees. That's not including the humidity that's in the air. Yeah, exactly. Because you have ovens and you have fryers. So this is like your big kitchen yeah. when you have both of these things on. So this looks like a bigger oven over yes, here. Yes, exactly. And, and the oven again is at? The oven is at 700 degrees. 700, woo, hot, hot. All right, even though it's that hot, it's still not taking all the moisture out. Correct. We still are probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 percent moisture. Wow. That's it. That's amazing. I mean, it's going through this oven at about how long does it take to go from one side to the other? Uh, probably it takes about 10 minutes. 10 minutes, because it's going? Yes. OK. We have our cooling conveyor, and that's what it's doing. Again, it's airing out the chip, helping to remove even more moisture. OK, now over here, it's a little bit harder on this side. Right. And the reason why is because we're probably cooking this a little bit of a higher temperature. And that, again, makes the difference in the final product. So each one of our products has a little tweakness to it. So we might grind a little bit finer or thicker. We might cook it a little bit longer. We might use yellow corn instead of white corn. We might do a blend of both. We change up the, so the, the shape. We slow or speed up the conveyor, so all those nuances make a difference in the product. You know, if I had to guess, I would say that this corn is a thicker. It wasn't ground down as much, Probably. right? That's correct. So this would be a chip where you'd say, like yeah, salsa. Yeah, you could probably dip it. Dip it, a dipping chip. All right, now I'm learning. Once it goes through that conveyor that's cooling them, then what? Right, then it'll go into the fryer, and that's that piece of equipment behind us. So you have a fryer that's frying anywhere between 350 and 400 degrees. Wow. And that will allow us to fry the tortilla chips and bring the moisture all the way down only to 1%. It, so it's going into hot oil, basically, yes. but yet it's still pulling out moisture. Correctly, because you have now a, a physical reaction, the transfer of moisture, moisture gets taken out and oil gets in. So that's why it's important for us to take out as much moisture as we can before it hits the fryer so that it absorbs less oil. And it, it, how long is it going to take through the fryer? How long does a tortilla cook in the fryer? Five minutes. About one hour. Five hours. <laughs> 18 minutes. An hour. It's going to take probably about uh, seven minutes. Seven minutes? Yeah. OK. And then if we walk over here, this is the end of the fryer, and it looks like the chips. I don't want to touch it, because I'm assuming they're no, really it's, hot. It's very hot, yes. But they look moist. Well, that's the oil that's glistening on top of it. So we do have underneath this conveyor, there's a drip conveyor, and there's a little, there's a wire mesh. 
so they're also drippy. So instead of taking paper towels and blotting them, yeah. which you would do at home, here it's a drip conveyor, so it's dripping down. And then now, where is it going from here? Now it's going to get its application of either a light coating of salt or any type of seasoning, like a nacho, Ooh. a pico de gallo, oh. you might have a barbecue. Oh. So all those flavors, again, along with the various points that we did some changes, is going to distinguish what the finished product is. And so as it goes in here, it's just a tumbler that's yes, just being applied. It is a tumbler, and it has an auger that runs the length of the tumbler, oh. and that's where the seasoning gets dispensed. It's like a little um, curtain of flavor. That, Fairy dust. Uh, exactly, a little curtain of flavor that goes over it. If and, I can try it? Yeah, sure. Why don't you go ahead and give it one? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a little hot. Yeah. A little hot. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, we get more? <laughs> <laughs> Give me that one at a time. Those are still warm. Yes, they are. They just salt? Yeah, just a little bit of salt. Oh. I'm telling you, a warm chip. Wow. Yeah. And as you can see, I mean, it's no, crisp. It's crisp, exactly. Very crisp. All the moisture's gone. Still a little warm, but wow. Where's it going now? Well, now it's going to go into the packing room or the packaging room. So these chips now have been baked, fried, seasoned, or salted, and then they'll go into the conveyor, into the packing room, where we will pack them in anywhere from a two-pound bag all the way, way down to one ounce. Now, I'm watching her, and I notice she's still pulling chips off. Right, because what she's doing is, if there's anything that was burned or anything that's extra folded, or something that doesn't pass muster, then that what she's doing is she's doing a, a final QA check. Okay. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Nachos were said to be created in 1943 by a guy with the nickname of Nacho. I quality control tested them, yeah. and they were good. <laughs> All right. So now they're ready to be packaged. So from that fry room, it goes up a conveyor, and overhead we have a series of conveyors that drop the product at the different stations. Now each station has a set of scales, and those scales will portion out depending on how many ounces we're going to put into a bag. How many ounces are we putting in these bags? Well, these right now, we're gonna put 16 ounces, which is one pound. Oh, okay. okay. So once the scales receive the product, and they communicate amongst themselves electronically, obviously. They say, okay, I'm ready to dump my <laughs> chips. I've got a pound, yeah. I'm ready to dump. So it talks to the packaging below, machine below it, and the packaging machine goes ahead and forms a bag, forms wow. a tube, and it's ready, and that tube is sealed on the bottom, and the chips come down, and then the machine seals the top. At the same time that it's sealing the top of the bag, it's sealing the bottom of the next bag. Wow. So then you continuously have that process of chips dumping, getting sealed, and coming off of the packaging machine. Now, in the next room, I mean, we're literally talking, what, maybe 50 feet away. Yes. The chips were really warm in there. Yes. Do they get cool enough? Well, they cool down, but not completely, I mean, cold. I mean, they're oh, okay. still warm chips, and they will go into a bag, and then they will be put into a box and um, they will finish the cooling process in our warehouse. If you look at the back of the machine, you have what we call roll stop film. So that's how a bag starts. It starts as a flat roll, and it gets threaded through the equipment, and at one point, there is a stamp that's going to put your code date on it. They're still warm, I mean, Matt, the bag is warm. Right, the exactly, bike, right? yes, All okay. right. So I mean, these are what we had earlier. Yes. Now I can, they're not as hot. Yeah, they're still a little bit warm, but they're manageable and they're good put into the bag. This process is so fast. Yes. How many bags are we filling? Well, in a, in a bag this size, we're probably filling about 25 to 30 bags a minute. How about this for a tortilla chip? This is the biggest tortilla chip I've ever seen. Well, actually, this is because it's a taco shell. Oh. Or will be a taco shell once we're done with it. I was so excited to get a big old tortilla. It's a taco shell. Yes, it's a taco <laughs> shell. And it starts as well. It's like 
just the same way that we did the tortilla chip. We will make some dough or masa. We will put it through our sheeter head. We will cut it, but now this time it's going to be cut into a five and a half, six inch, or even a seven inch diameter to make a, re a small, regular, or large taco shell. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Tortilla chips became popular when a restaurant owner began selling fried pieces of unused tortilla. Thank you very much thank for coming. You. I want to thank Lucy. I want to thank everyone out here at Anita's for showing us how they make tortilla chips. And I especially want to thank you, Charles, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest. Now, if there's something you want to know more about, let me hear from you. Go to curiosityquest.org, click on the Send Us On A Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you sending us to this big factory like this one. Remember, every great adventure begins with just one person's curiosity. So I wonder, what are you curious about? I'm Joel Green, I'll see you next time. All right, don't hold out on me. All right, there we go. Uh-huh, it is eating time. And where's that fan? The fan's right there? I'm gonna go hang out in the fan. Oh, uh. I'm all about it. Mm.